So right. So in this lecture, let us see how can we define an object for a class. This is one of the most important concept. Okay. Let's uh, slowly get into the OOPS concepts of Java. So before I explain this concept, let me uh, explain you real-time scenario. Uh, you are working on automating an web application where you have five pages in it. Okay, in every page you have some header section, and that you want to validate whether the header section have all the links properly displaying or not. Something like that. Assume. So. You have first you will be navigating to the home page and you will be writing the block of code to make sure whether the header is properly displaying or not. Okay, header will not change how many pages you navigated. Okay, header will be constant, it will be sticked. If the if you navigate to multiple pages, the page will be refreshed, but header will be same. Assume that. Okay, now but go to every page and make sure that header is not changing. That is your requirement. So you will write a code some 10 lines of code to make sure that header is displaying as per expected. 10 lines of code for header display, something like header. In general, you will just write 4 or 5 lines. I don't want to scare you saying by 10 lines. Let's take 3 lines. Fine. So there are totally 10 pages. You go to the every page and make sure that the code is uh, that header code is displaying or not three lines you write again go to one more page again three lines to verify the code header okay same code you are repeatedly writing in your test case so the three common lines you are writing totally 10 times because you have navigating to 10 pages and for each and every page you are validating that header so the three lines of code you are replicating 10 times so same three lines of code that means 30 times you are writing is this a good practice to write a lengthy code with the same lines 10 times. So why can't you write if this three lines in separate block and give a one name to that block saying header validation. And whenever you get that particular uh, requirement to verify that you will just call that block name validate header. That's it. It will control will go to that block and execute that all steps. So you can write a single line instead of three letters. So let us see what is that block and how can we write it and how can you call that block here. Okay, that's what I'm trying to explain. Okay, so for that I have taken that scenario. If I just tell you that you can write code in a block and call here, you might not get that interest to understand this. So now I am defining one more class. So this is the class where I write all the blocks. Okay, I, this is separately. I'm maintaining one more class where I write all my reusable components just like header validation, footer validation. Right? Click on finish. So now, for this section, I don't want to execute this because this section I'll just be writing blocks and I'll be calling these blocks in this my basics one class. Here I want to call the block. So all these blocks I'll be writing in basics two. So you need not have main because we are not executing this. We are just calling this into other class. So let's remove this. If you want to execute from this class, you have to write main for sure. Okay, so I just say, I'll write one method name. Blocks are nothing but methods. In Java, we say methods. I'll write one method. Public void validate header. This is the name of the method. You have to write braces like this and write a block. Yeah, now this is the block in this class. So void here is the written type that I'll talk to you in some time. I'll talk in some time. So public is an access modifier. That means you can access this anywhere in any class. More about that I'll be talking in the inheritance a concept. When I'm talking about inheritance, then I'll speak about this public. Right now just admit by writing a public and return type I'll just discuss now now so assume that you have written a method called validate header so here you write your all the code related to validate all the links in a header so for now I just write system dot 
println uh, header links validated assume that so assume this is a uh, full 10 lines of code which is doing everything fine okay successfully we have written all that code and we have sent given name as validate header method now come back to your actual class so here as now i need to call that method okay uh, let me remove all these okay I will write I navigated to home page here you will write your selenium code so actually open browser and you will navigate to the some home page now validate headers rather than writing three lines of code I will call the class objects present in basics 2 to this basics 1 so how can you call the methods present in this class to this class so that's the logic okay for that you have to first define object for this class okay so tell this tell uh, tell this parent class that there is one class called basics2 that we are just telling here okay let me define object for this basics2 class or uh, i'll do something i'll write it in a understandable way rather than confusing basics basics word uh, let us say um, methods Okay, for your understanding, I am putting this methods. Okay, and this I write it as parent. Fine. Now I can I can explain you clearly without speaking that basics word again and again. Right. Now I want to tell my parent class about the methods class. I can do that by creating an object for the methods class method m equals to and you say new let me ex let me write the step and explain you okay so here i am saying i am creating an object m for this method class that means if i want to access any particular method from this methods class i can do it from methods object dot method name right this is the syntax fine if you want to access any method from other class you have to write that particular class object and say dot and call the method name just remember this mantra that's enough here class object you need to get which class object where you have this method Okay, here my class is methods so get this class object so you can define this is a class object for that methods you can define with this syntax okay class object name equals to new the class braces so basically this new is a memory allocation operator so this memory allocation operator creates a memory for this class in this parent class okay so m is a method for this methods class okay you have successfully defined the object now follow this syntax and call that class object you want okay i have that class object that is m because i have created the class object here now i can call that method name by just giving dot dot okay all the methods will be displayed which are present in that methods class okay here i am interested in validate header you might be wondered what all these methods are present because you have written only one method these are uh, default methods which you get in java you need not worry about those so m dot validate header okay click on this that's it now if you print this in output let us see what it is giving us Interland, there is something yeah you can see there is a, some kind of error here okay why so let me explain you that before that let me run this program 
without using system dot println. Got it? The only logic is you need to create an objects or method in this parent class. That's it. Once you get the object, object dot call that method. You can see that I navigated to home page and then after header links validated. So where did we get this text? This text is present here in this method. So we are actually pulling that text and executing that particular method in the parent class with the help of this syntax. So tomorrow you, you have some other class called class B in that you have how to validate footers. Simple create a class B method class B object saying class B give some object name. It's up to you. This M and CB are up to you. Whatever name you can give to your object. Uh, as an object name just give a one letter and say like this C class B okay you have successfully created an object for this class B fine now access that footer validation by just saying CB dot okay this is the syntax that particular class object which I created dot footer validation that's it so now I am getting error because there is no class B. If I create a class B exactly, this validation goes. And for example, if you want to validate images and that image validation, one more tester or one more QA guy has written in separate class. That is a class C. Now how can you access the images validation from class C? Simple class C object dot image validation. So how can you create class C object? Same syntax class C give any object name it's up to you so this is this you can give any some n and new memory allocation operator and say class C again and give braces this is how you write syntax and here you say object dot image validation that's it this is how you can access the methods from other class to your parent class by creating object for that class okay so that's what I want to tell you in this session. Fine. Uh, let me remove all this. Not necessary. Okay. So now here I is void. This is nothing but written type. What it is expecting to return. Okay. Because I am not returning anything. I am just printing it. If you want to this to return something. For example, I want to return uh, value 10. Okay, I just want to return this. Whenever you execute this method, this method will give you value 10. Assume that. So that's you can that you can do with the help of return keyword. So return keyword will actually execute your block and finally it returns you something. You can just do like if everything is executed properly, then I say uh, return pass assume that script pass fine when I say return pass right so here you have to tell what you are returning in the initially in the initial phase only so because in the in the void place you have to define what you are returning in this method if you don't return anything you just say void that means this method is not returning anything but if you are returning something, then you have to give what you are returning. Here I am returning string. Pass is in double quotes. That means string. So give here string. You need not give move your mouse. It's throwing some error, right? It says change method return type to string. Click on this. It will change to string and error gone. Okay. I mean, you need not, you have to give what data type you are returning. Here pass is in string data type. That means you are returning string. Okay. So if you want to return 2, that will be an integer. Again, it's saying error. Move your mouse. It says change method return type to integer. Because you are returning integer and you are asking to, you are expecting to return string, which is not true. Just click on this link. It changed to int and error gone. Fine. Now it is returning 2, right? Let's go back here in parent. 
okay m dot validate header so it is returning two i'll throw it into one variable called uh, some s assume that i know that it is returning integer okay because i went back to my validate header and i made sure that it is returning integer okay uh, let me print out this i'll just print system dot okay so run this program now and you see that it returned 2 this is printed because we are just saying system dot dot print ln why why this is printing because this pro this method got executed and it returned 2 that means in this place it's replacing with 2 and you are saying to print this so that's the reason it printed 2 got it so understand the logic so there are why there are two system dot print elements here first one because we are printing it deliberately it is expected but here i am not printing this but still i am seeing this in the output because i am returning two so once this method is executed completely it gives us two and i am placing this in this block so that's the reason it interprets as a 2 and it also gives 2 as an output okay so in general uh, practical what we does is we write all the validations here and say finally if everything went fine a return pass okay and we define our this as an integer string pass is not an uh, integer right we'll make it as a string something like this string and we'll go back here and we say we want to see pass as an output fine so if everything went fine it returns pass and whatever it returns i am printing in the output so i have to see pass in my output yeah test case pass so that's how we come to conclusion so the return is very important we'll be using that in most of the cases and yeah you learn lot of concepts from this section the most important one is how can you call the methods from the other class and how can you create an object for the class and return types as well okay yeah